Afghan women's rights activist Vazma Frog joins us now. Vazma, thank you so much indeed for your time. Uh, we were talking earlier about an issue of trust, of course, between the Taliban and the population of Afghanistan, and especially for the women. With this call now from this gentleman who works for the Taliban's Cultural Commission that women should join the government, what do you make of that? I think, uh, I think let's just step back for a second. Just trying, we are all trying to make a sense of what has happened in the past, you know, in the 48 hours or so or more in Afghanistan, because all of this is very, very unexpected. Yes, we were ready for a political settlement, but, you know, sudden change has actually shocked us all so much. So we are trying to recover and trying to make a sense of what's going on. Second thing about what's, uh, you know, so there's no um, government here right now in Afghanistan. There hasn't been an, an emirate or a republic or an inclusive government or an Islamic government that has not yet been been uh, enacted. So it's very fluid, the situation uh, from what I have been following on the ground is that, you know, uh, we do, although in the provinces, it's a bit different than what's in Kabul. Kabul has a lot of focus of the media. You have a lot of, you know, foreign military in the airport. And of course, there is an Afghanistan beyond Kabul airport that uh, has a lot of, you know, unfolding situations. So uh, I welcome that, you know, that statement has come up. Uh, I also see a lot of women have actually been coming up, um, you know, in the local media and on uh, the streets. Of course, the numbers are very, very few compared to what we saw three, four days ago. But at the same time, these statements have to actually put into action. Uh, we don't know who would do it at the this point because we do not have a government in place but once there is a government in place of course you know this is a new Afghanistan and the Taliban are not in the 96 nor Afghanistan is in the 96 so there's new change the new Afghanistan and and I think if you know for the Taliban uh, it is going to be a new opportunity as well to kind of you know uh, change their image the way they have been actually kind of enforcing themselves in all these years and the before 20 years and now because it's a new Afghanistan and, and this young generation you know I see these young women much much courageous than I was 20 years ago when I came out after the fall of the Taliban so it's a, it's a very different uh, you know Afghanistan right now. Yeah, I'm really glad that you actually started that answer by saying, actually, it's more important right now just to take a step back, because as you say, and it's been very noticeable that world leaders, just even Afghans themselves, apart from obviously their immediate emotions, almost nobody's able to process what's happened and therefore can't really give some kind of rational reaction about the way forward. But stepping, taking that step back, what would you like to see happen in terms of how the Taliban relate to the people. Because if a Taliban representative themselves says something, that issue of trust, which has lost, of course, during that initial period of Taliban power, that takes more than just words to rebuild. So would you like to see some kind of people that the Afghan people, as an individual or as a group of people, the Afghan people would say, yes, we trust them, and we want them to go and speak to the Taliban and tell us that they trust and believe what the Taliban is saying because they've looked them in the eye and believe that the Taliban has the future of our people at heart. So I'm as old as the Afghan conflict, you know. I've seen so many coups in, in my lifetime, and I have seen so much bloodshed. So for me, at this point, uh, the fact that, you know, this war has come to an end uh, is, is an important point, number one. And uh, the second point is that this bloodshed that ha we have lost so many lives. You know, if it was from all sides, whoever has lost a life in Afghanistan, that has to come to an end. So that is the if that is kind of the entry point or the anchoring of this whole situation, I think things will start changing. We are very much, you know, looking forward to see if there are this amnesty for the, you know, Afghan forces, if the amnesty for the government, you know, soldiers and all that is actually materialized. Because imagine we have had three. 100,000 armed forces, 2 million Afghans have been working with the government. If there is a kind of a revenge, we have been hearing about some, you know, ad hoc um, reports in Kabul 
where homes of people have been searched or, for example, their cars were taken away. Bilal was talking about that, too. But, of course, the Taliban are saying those are looters. You know, there are people who are the opportunists, which, of course, you know, the reality on the ground is very, very uh, blurry. So what, what a, a lot of us are actually talking about right now is that can we look forward? Can we say that there is a government in place that actually brings all Afghans? Imagine this country is full of so many different ethnic groups. Are they all going to find their, you know, some space for them? Or, or women, for example, are part of the government. I saw the statement from uh, the Taliban Cultural Committee, um, uh, you know, that women can be part of. And the, the, yesterday, today, we saw women on the local televisions, not on the national television, but on the, you know, other private channels. But at the same time, you know, right now, things are so, uh, you know, ha Afghanistan is so, so overshadowed by the news from the airport. I, and I want to say, yes, it's pathetic. I see my people, you know, kind of dropping down themselves from the airplanes, and that, like, hurts me so much. But there's an Afghanistan beyond the airport. What happens to the millions of IDPs, you know, who are right now in the mosques in Kabul? I saw Germany just uh, said that they have stopped, you know, their aid. What would happen to all these international humanitarian efforts that needs to happen? You know, this country has had so much you know, poverty. There are 18 million people at the brink of poverty. What happens to all that? So there is a lot of, you know, anxiety around what happens next. Uh, where does the, you know, money for the government, if there is a government place, will the Taliban accommodate other political groups? I hear about some of the, uh, you know, resistance movements right now taking shape in the north, for example. Uh, I, and, and, and all of that is kind of, you know, still we have to see um, how things would unfold. After the Russians were expelled by the Mujahideen, the Americans and NATO have left. And it's always been the case that the Afghan people, especially that one particular tribe, the Pakhtuns, they have always been, if you are a foreign invader, we will fight you until the very day that the, your last fighter has left our homeland. Now that they are leaving and have almost completely left, does Afghanistan need the international community in terms of bringing people together? I'm not talking about international assistance, not talking about potential military action, not talking about possible security but just to bring the Afghan people together, or can they do it between themselves? Um, I think it's very much needed. Uh, one is that the humanitarian uh, you know, assistance is very much needed to save lives. Number two is also about facilitating the healing and reconciliation. There is, you know, a huge uh, population in Afghanistan that you know, that is under the age of, you know, 25 or, or even younger, for example, and they haven't seen the Taliban Emirates, for example. So what for them, the, coming to terms, this change is very, very hard. And second thing is also about, you know, terrorism, international terrorism. We don't want Afghanistan to turn into another, you know, again, into another hub for international terrorism. Do the Taliban have them that, that uh, you know, governance model that can actually, you know, prevent uh, Afghanistan from becoming a, a hub for, you know, all these terrorist groups that we saw in the past few weeks? We had Uzbeks, for example, fighting uh, from the IMU. We had the Chinese Uyghurs, for example, we have the Pakistani, you know, militants, a lot of other, you know, um, uh, uh, regional terrorist organizations who are active in Afghanistan. And remember, Haqqani Network itself is, is, is declared an FTO by the State Department. So all of this, you know, would actually implicate the relationships with the State Department, with the U.S., you know, beyond um, just uh, what happens in, in the few weeks. But most important is, uh, is a stable government in Afghanistan. And I hope the Taliban Taliban used this opportunity. I heard Mullah brother who was saying this is a test of time. It's really a test of time for them because they know that this current generation, this, the population in Afghanistan, are not the same people that will just actually be flogged away. Wazma, thank you so much indeed for spending time with us on the news. I really appreciate it. Wazma Frog, uh, Afghan women's rights activist.